Welcome to the exciting module to introduction to power and signal integrity where we'll delve into the fascinating world of signal integrity and power integrity. You will learn why these are so crucial and unique challenges that comes along with them. So, let's get started. Let's gain insight into power integrity and its significance through a real world example. Consider electricity distribution network which supplies electricity to our homes. Electricity is generated at a power plant. Similarly, in an on-die power delivery network of a SOC, the external power source supplies power to the entire chip. The electricity generated is then transferred to voltage step-down transformers of a subsystem to minimize the loss during transmission. The high voltage electricity is then transformed to transmission lines. Similarly, on-die voltage regulators and converters within an SOC adjust the voltage levels to meet specific needs of different on-die components. Electricity travels through transmission lines to the substations in our area. Like in a SOC, power delivery network including metal traces, interconnects and packaged substrate that carry the power to various regions of the chip. In substations, Voltage step-down transformers reduce the voltage. From substation, the power is then sent to local transformers. Similarly, decoupling capacitors within an SOC serve a similar purpose, stabilizing the voltage level locally for each integrated circuit. They act as a local energy reservoir to handle the transient current demands. Finally, power goes from transformers to electric meters and from there through protective fuses and breakers to switches in our homes. Similarly, in SOC, we have protective circuitry and switches for power management. Components like CPU, GPU, memory and transistors are the end users of power in a SOC. From the electricity distribution network example, we can derive basic components related to power integrity including power delivery network. In electricity distribution system, the power delivery network consists of all transmission lanes from the generation point to the local transformers and then from local transformers to the wiring inside the home to the appliances. This distribution system supplies power to components. It is a network of power and ground traces along the power supply that delivers electrical power to the components. Voltage regulations. Voltage regulation ensures that the voltage supply of the electronic devices remains within a specified limit, providing a stable power source even when voltage fluctuation occurs. In an SOC, voltage regulator ensures various components within an SOC receive a stable and reliable power supply. Fluctuations or variations in voltage level can lead to instabilities, errors or even component failures affecting the overall performance and reliability of an SOC. Voltage regulations is critical for achieving the desired balance between power consumption and performance. Impedance Impedance refers to the opposition to the flow of electrical charge. In power integrity, impedance refers to the effective resistance offered by the power delivery network. Low impedance is desired to minimize the voltage drops and ensure efficient power delivery. Having learned about some basic components of power integrity, let's delve deeper into what power integrity is. Considering these two real world examples. Flickering of light in our house. This indicates that the power delivered to the light is insufficient and that the voltage levels are not properly maintained for their operations. Pulp fuse due to high current. Each pulp has a maximum current rating that it can handle. Exceeding this current can cause excessive heating of filaments leading to its meltdown and breakage. In this case, excessive power damages the circuit elements. These examples illustrate the power should be delivered within specific limits and that it should be stable within properly maintained voltage levels. This is what we called as power integrity. Power integrity refers to the ability to deliver noiseless and stable power to the component. The goal is to minimize the noise and fluctuations and properly maintain voltage levels to ensure clean and sufficient power delivery. 
If power integrity is not achieved, it can lead to various issues like device malfunctioning, timing errors, and unlimitedly reduced device reliability. Power integrity is of particular concern in miniaturized electronic devices where precise timing is essential. We have discussed the power delivery network used for supplying power to our homes. Similarly, to provide powers to devices, transistors, we need power delivery network. On a printed circuit board, PCB, to provide power to an SOC, we have different PDN at different stages. For example, we have PDN at PCB level or system level. We have a PDN at on die level. The following block diagram provides a brief overview of how a typical PDN looks. Let's dwell into the components of the power distribution network as depicted in the block diagram. Power source. This can be a battery or a power supply whose primary function is to provide main electrical power to the system. Power rails. These are conductive paths that carry power throughout the system. They are designated for specific voltage levels such as 5 volts, 3 volts, often refers to as power and ground domains. Voltage regulator module, VRM for short. This ensures a stable output voltage and that the supplied voltage is within a specified limit. Decoupling capacitors. These capacitors filter out high frequency noise on power rails and provide a local energy reservoir. They are useful during rapid change in currents that can happen during operation of an integrated circuit. They stabilize voltage levels and ensures a stable power supply. Switching This refers to the change in logic level of a signal from high to low or vice versa. If the switching occurs, the current on a power rail also fluctuates. Current This is the rate of flow of electrical charge through a conductor. Impedances this is the opposition of the flow of electrical charge. It indicates three components, resistance, capacitance, and inductance. Capacitor opposes the voltage changes across them, while the inductor opposes the current changes across them. The PDN has many components connected to it, and these components generate noise. The PDN is susceptible to electronic noise generated by these components. In high-speed circuits, Signal transitions, rise time or fall time occurs very quickly. The more transitions, the greater is the electrical noise on the PDN. If PDN noise exceeds a certain threshold, it might alter the voltage delivered to the devices. PDN noise can cause crosstalks on signal lanes. PDN supply rails are largest conductors and the PDN noise can potentially cause significant electromagnetic radiations. For good power integrity, controlling PDN noise is crucial. To control PDN noise, we must able to analyze its source and its causes. The current drawn by the devices is not constant but fluctuates with time. Thus, the AC voltage on PDN will be VPDN is equals to ZPDN into IPDN. When digital signals changes in devices, the change occurs in a short duration of time, measured by rise time or fall time. TR or TF. In high speed circuit, it is order of picoseconds. Suppose DI is the amount of current change on the power rail and these signal transitions in time DT, then the PDN electrical noise will be given by V noise PDN is equals to L into DI by DT, where L comes from current loop paths. Every component in the power delivery network has some parasitic inductance associated with it. Target impedance refers to a desired impedance that the network can exhibit or in other words, it is the highest limit of impedance. Let's discuss some of the challenges associated with power integrity. High speed circuits. High speed digital components with fast switching can cause sudden changes in current within a short period of time, leading to complex power integrity issues. Current spikes. In high switching circuits, Power demand by the component changes suddenly, which can in turn cause spike in voltage or current. This can lead to voltage droops, temporary voltage reductions, or voltage ripples. Miniaturization 
As technology advances, the size of transistors is decreasing, making it complex to maintain a low impedance path and provide power to each component. Layout constraints and decoupling capacitor placements. The layout constraints on a PCB can sometimes restrict the placement of decoupling capacitors. Thermal effects. In modern architectures, as components heat up during their operation, their power requirements can also change. This makes thermal integrity a key aspect to ensure power integrity. Simultaneous switching noise. When multiple digital components switch simultaneously, it creates voltage droops and noise in the PDN. Here are some of the advantages of designing a circuit that meets power integrity requirements. Reliable operation. Power integrity ensures a stable and consistent power supply. Fluctuations or noise in power can lead to malfunctions, errors, or even complete circuit failures. Signal integrity. Power integrity directly affects signal integrity. The supply rail noise and ground bouncers can couple into nearby signal lanes, degrading the signal quality and causing data errors. Reduce electromagnetic interference. Power integrity helps in reduced electromagnetic emissions. Voltage fluctuations and noise in power delivery network can generate electromagnetic radiations which may interfere with other nearby systems. Timing and clock distribution A stable and noise-free power supply is crucial for proper clock distribution. Poor power integrity can lead to jitters or skews which can lead to timing violations. Electromagnetic compliance Power integrity helps in reducing EMI which is essential in meeting electromagnetic compatibility standards. Compliance with EMC regulations is crucial for products intended for customer use. So far, we have discussed what power integrity is, why it is important and its challenges and its advantages. Now, we'll discuss similar aspects of signal integrity. Here is a sample animation of how data transmission occurs in an electronic system. In an electronic system, different components exchange signals with each other. Signal integrity is essentially the ability of the signal to transfer information from transmitter to receiver. Before understanding signal integrity, let's see what a signal is first. A signal is an electrical representation of information with variations in voltage or current, etc. carrying the information. There are two types of signals, analog signals, these are continuous representation of information. Signals can take a wide variety of values at any point of time. Digital signals. These are discrete and quantized representation of information. Signals are represented by two discrete values denoted by 0 and 1. Digital signals are less susceptible to noise and interfaces than analog signals. They are easier to reconstruct compared to analog signals due to the discrete state represented information. Also, digital circuits can be more easily produced compared to analog circuits. A signal transmission chain consists of a transmitter, channel and a receiver. To understand signal integrity, let's take an example of a phone call with a friend. Imagine you are talking to a friend on a mobile phone. Your voice is the signal that travels from your phone to your friend's phone through mobile towers and wireless transmission. Signal integrity refers to how well your voice is maintained with clarity and accuracy during the call. Let's understand few problems while having a call with your friend. If there is lot of noise around you while you're talking, it will be difficult for your friend to understand. Similarly, in electrical systems, noise can distort signals. Sometimes you might hear echoes during the call, which can make your conversation confusing. This happens due to signal reflection. Similarly, in electronic systems, signal reflections can lead to distortions. The strength of the signal affects the quality of the call. If the signal is of weak, your voice might break. Similarly, weak signal strength in circuit can cause to signal degradation. Occasionally, you might hear faint snippets of other conversations while you are on call. This is due to interference from adjacent signals in the channel. A similar phenomena in signal is called as crosstalk. 
components like CPU and GPU in SOC can also talk to each other in terms of digital signals. It is very important that these signals should be transmitted and received properly for proper functioning of the chip. And this is basically what is known as signal integrity. A digital signal is a stream of bits of ones and zeros. Signal integrity is achieved if the receiver detects the same streams of ones and zeros that were originally transmitted. An eye diagram can be used to measure signal integrity. At low frequencies, the PCB traces or interconnections have dominant resistive characteristics, whereas at high frequencies, capacitors and inductors effects can also play a significant role. Now, let's understand the challenges in maintaining signal integrity. Crosstalk. This occurs when a signal transmitted from one channel causes an undesirable effect on another channel. It is usually caused by capacitive coupling between two channels. A capacitor resists the change of voltage across it due to which if the aggressor is transitioning from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, then because of this capacitive coupling, the victim wire also tries to follow the same trend so the voltage across this capacitive couple does not change. The effect of crosstalk is the noise on non-switching wires and increased delay on switching wires. Reflection due to impedance mismatch. Changes in impedance such as interference or end of wire traces can also cause reflection. The reflected signals interferes with the original signals causing distortions. Attenuation. This is decrease in signal amplitude as it travels along the trace distorting the signal waveform. Skew. This is the timing mismatch between the signal that are supposed to be simultaneous. This can cause timing errors, for example, single sampling errors due to a mismatch in clock. Electromagnetic interference. In high speed switching circuits at high frequencies, the traces act as antennas. The radiation signals can cause interference. In this lesson, we covered the topics of power integrity and its importance. We also discussed the challenges associated with power integrity. Furthermore, we talked about signal integrity and its significances as well as the obstacles that can arise in signal integrity. Moving forward, we will dwell into the detailed study of a power delivery network.